We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Mr. Farmer. Hello. Uh, last time I was here was regarding adding the dock garage door for the Manny's building. Um, the, the last uh, door we had was just a simple garage door. So we added um, a panel door, essentially, with two windows right there. And it will be um, a shade of blue too, so it won't be plain white. Everybody's okay with that? I don't like it. No? No. The two panels of windows? Yes. Yeah, that's just like the garage door, that's all. Um, the reason why is because this is the loading dock, dock and behind it is all the uh, inventory and equipment. We don't want to put too many windows in there. We still could put it, they make decorative doors without windows. They see those because I was looking at those for the fire station. Bring that thing over here, I can't even see that. <laughs> windows if you can make it decorative okay okay I mean, you can if you want a solid I don't I don't you want to be like it doesn't have to have windows you can make up okay. whatever you know if I don't know anything I don't know much about garage doors if I got just plain old doors in my on my on my house but if they could make if they make some kind of a colonial door without windows that John's talking about without windows that's perfectly fine. who's that door guy in East Hampton Rainer door. Rainer. He had he had a whole <laughs> bunch of different designs of. You know, you got Rainer door. You got uh, um, I don't know if you're talking mm -hmm. to uh, Jerry Devine on I'm this. I'm not sure who the architects talked to yet. Okay. I could go speak to them and say we want something that's more of a colonial design. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I looked for some for the fire station North Hadley, and they got a whole different kind of different ranges of of colonial looking doors. Where was it? Where was this? That was, that was from Rainer I seen, and okay. then. Then I got some, uh, I don't know, I think I got some information from that. Okay. And different doors. They all, you know, anybody that puts in doors, you know, the guy from Hadley, the guy from East Hampton, you, they don't give you a selection of something really colonial. Okay. They'll probably come back with two or three things and yeah, it, 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 it may have to have the architecture. Maybe even instead of getting them drawn on your drawing, Bring us, the the, bring us the cut sheets of the company. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and you would say, you know, I would like to use one of these three or four. Right. And that you don't need to have. You don't need to get it drawn at the building. We know what the building looks like. We know what it's going to look like. Okay. But it, but won't, won't, that way, it saves you going back to the architect and paying him to redraw and redraw okay. and redraw. Just some legwork on you. Come back with the cut sheets. You know, these. I don't know, half a dozen different styles. I would like these three. What do you think? And then you can go from there without going through all this every time. Okay. When do you want to start okay. building? Last week? Last week. Yeah. Right. We, we, that's not, this is not holding it up. Okay. You know, this is something that... No, you, yeah. you're going you're you're to keep that opening and start yeah. door. You yeah. started to build, right? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, okay. So we, we started there. But right. this isn't, this isn't going to... Yeah. The it's opening is not going to change. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you yeah. get the proper set. Was that, that, was that, that a, a 10 by 10 door? You know? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, I, I'll double check that. But. So you know that's not an odd size door for something. So they should be able to accommodate that. But if it was 15 by 16 or something. Be a whole different story. But they should have a recent, reasonable selection of those things. Okay. I'm gonna okay. see what I got in my file there. I think I got a whole file of those. <coughs> All right. I, I got a whole bunch of stuff for that fire station. All right. I'll go take a look and okay. shop around. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Carol Smith. Yep. I went over today to see Dan over in the assessor's office and about our property line and things like that. And um, what, what, what property are we talking about? 33 Lawrence Plain Road. Okay. Um, he has 
these plans that show that, well, this one doesn't show this here. Oh, this one here. Let me see. I got it upside down, so let me find it. Okay. We're here. All right, so now this doesn't show this, where Teddy Michkowski has got his trailers. Okay. Okay. And so he says that, that it was a change done by him and um, Kenny Keeler. And I don't know where they got that. They said this was done in 2000, and I have this printout from the registry of deeds that doesn't show that at all. It's still. registered it. It's still here. And this is done in 2010. So we're having a problem because. Teddy Michkowski is wanting to move our pole, our electric pole, and because um, it, it said he says it's on its right away, and it doesn't. Our right, the right away, the road is already in there. That the, nothing needs to be changed, and he's got dig safe sprayed all over the road on the main road and. Um, right away on our grass. He sprayed on our grass for right away. So the it's, assessors are asking us to resolve that concern? Right. Okay. I'm asking. Okay. And when was that sign, Jim? This one is 2010, January right. 29th. Right. Okay. right. And if you see on this other one, too, the, that this um, goes straight across, one of them goes straight across and the other one doesn't. Okay, so there's only so much we can do. We can't change property lines. Okay. But what you have here is um, this same surveyor did both plans. So I think your first stop has to be with the surveyor to ask him what's, why he did them differently. Okay. Randy Eiser. Randy Eiser. Yeah. Well, we've been to Randy Eiser and Okay. So technically that, technically this survey is a survey of this land here. Right. And it only picks up this land as a, as <coughs> an anchor, a reference. A reference. Mm -hmm. right. Uh this this document is not a survey of this property. Mm -hmm. So that's probably why th this, on the other hand, is a survey of this property. So that's why the details would be different because the details on this, the details from here, don't matter to this plan. Okay. Um, why the assessors did not pick up the plan change, I don't know. Um, this so this shows a parcel A. Can and you tell me if this is registered? You know, this is recorded. It is at oh, the register. Right there. 187 yep. page eight, well, 187 page. However, just putting a plan on record. Does, it looks like this was supposed to be a transfer. And Kenny Keeler says he's never transferred anything. Parcel A to be combined with land of Keeler as shown herein to form one undivided parcel. So what this plan says is that parcel A and parcel B were going to be combined. And that only would happen if someone had also done a deed of it. Just recording this doesn't solve the problem. 
Okay. So the so next there has to be a deed. There would have to be, in order to combine parcel A and parcel B, there has to be a deed of one or the other. Who owned parcel A? Do, do you know why they were doing this? Are, uh, well, when this property was, well, when they, uh, Teddy sold this property to the Spice Company, he kept this okay. for some reason. He's got 10 feet along this edge and this section, and he has a trailer on this section. And the, the plan at the time was that parcel A and parcel B were going to be combined. Now, it doesn't say who is going to, well, it's Keeler owns parcel B. Right. So this said, this says the plan, the idea was that he cut off parcel A, he was going to transfer parcel A to Keeler. Okay, but he still has his trailer there. Uh, but this will not be the first time that something is shown on a plan and doesn't happen. Okay. Um, so this is only part of the picture. What you need to do is basically find out if there was ever a deed of parcel A, which would involve looking at the registry of deeds. Okay. And you're tell Dan's telling you that that, that is didn't happen. Let me see where where's well, the assessor's plan. Okay. So the assessor's plan is showing it that it never happened. That doesn't mean it didn't. It doesn't mean it happened. That doesn't mean it never happened. It's all one piece. It's all right piece on the it's assessor's It's all one plan. piece on the assessor's Oh, okay. Plan. So that suggests that it happened. Right. 1.665. No, that's... 5.5 and then that's 14,000. 5830, 5830. 5830. So the, the, this size and this size are the same. And the that's 5, uh, 5.5 eight acres uh, plus another quarter acre. Yeah, that, that's not added on to this one. I don't know what 72 or 61 is. <coughs> spice go ahead. It's about uh, just shy of two acres. Southern New England spice. Okay, so that's one point. That's one and three, one and two thirds acres here. Yeah, that's about one and two thirds. Okay, so either they, for some reason this piece doesn't show up on their parcel, but I know. it may actually. It, that doesn't, these, it doesn't, these there, it says right on it not to be used for conveyancing, which means real estate transfers. Okay. These are not as accurate as these, so. The fact that that doesn't show up might mean that it has been combined, but they just didn't correct that number. Just didn't correct that number. Um, but um, what what it, you just want to know who owns that? Mm -hmm. um, I guess we can't tell you because we don't have the records of the registry of deeds. And according. To this here, this line goes this way instead of there. So. Well, that's so. this line is this line. This line is this over here. Okay. This is the out. So this is the outline of this right here. Hold on, the room. Or Teddy's back. Teddy, you're you're, you're a rear line. Teddy. Okay. So either. So, but this should go to this line. This. Is this line right here? Yes, but it, how is it connecting here? You're saying this it, that's going a different direction. Well, we can't answer that. Yeah. Uh, these these are survey questions and registry of deeds questions that we don't we don't we don't keep these kind of records. So unfortunately, we we're not trying to pass the buck. But it's just, we just can't help you with these things when you have questions on lot lines. So the question is either that transfer happened or it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So either does Ted so this one, the Spice yeah. Company? Mm -hmm. Okay, so either he still owns that or he's deeded it to Keeler. You want to take it with you? And the you know, only way to be sure is to look at the registry of deeds. Because if it's not there, it didn't happen. 
But as to the other question you have about why the plans are slightly different, uh, fortunately the same surveyor did both of them, so you really have to talk to him about what's what okay. and why why he did different plans. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. B. Scanlon. Hi. Hi. Thank you to uh, apply for an accessory apartment. Okay. An existing property. I don't know what we need here, but these are the plans. Uh, we have an existing 24 by 24 garage. Where is this? 40 Street. Okay. We need plot plan. We need seven copies. We need four copies of the plot plan okay. of, the, of, the, of the property, where the house located on it, and where your parking is going to be. Okay. Okay. Four copies of that. Yes. Right. It doesn't have to be big ones like this. It can be. We prefer eight by eight and a half by eleven. Regular, regular sizes. Okay. okay. Uh, Pre I'm sewer or not a on sewer? Septic or sewer? Septic. Septic. Septic, you got to get a board of health. Well, we had someone come out and look at it. He said our tank is big enough. We just need to expand our leaching field. Yeah, we need, so we, 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 need, we, need, we need to have a board of health about that. Okay. Okay. If you go to the Hadley website, um, the, 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 the zoning bylaws are on there. And there's a section on accessory apartments. that tells you kind of like in a book like report of what you're going to call. I'm about the four copies of the plot plan. Let's get that. Okay. No. It'll tell you the limitations, 920 square feet maximum. 896. Yeah. Or, you know, well, that. Good. Okay. All right, so it's just, okay. Thank you. That's it. Uh, 15. We'll continue with uh, 83 Rocky Hill Road here. Hello. Good evening. Hi. Right. Good to see you again. So, uh, Want me to start? You guys? Yes, sir. No, you okay. yep. So we, the way we left it um, a couple weeks ago was um, with the Arbor of Ivies yes. and some full in, you know, making sure it's not see, you know, visible from the road. I spoke to David Moskin. I've got some notes. Um, the first thing is, is the fence actually belongs to him. Okay. So that was miscommunication on everyone's part. It doesn't belong to the neighbor. It's actually his fence. So it's an eight foot high fence. and. Um, when we go to pull the actual permits for the job, he'll make sure that if you want in writing, uh, for as long as the solar system's there, he'll have that fence there uh, blocking you know, the view uh, from that. Um, as far as environmentally goes, he doesn't see the Arborvitaes as something that he's willing to do only because all of the foliage on his property is natural and he doesn't want to bring in unnatural uh, evergreens or whatever they might be. Uh, just to, to block that one little one foot thing that you can see with your fence from the road. So he, he's not really looking at that as an option. Um, two other points is um, there are fences on his side, I'm sorry, there are trees on his side of his fence that the solar array will be in front of so they'll actually can create even more uh, blockage from the road. Um, and he is, um, so the fence is his, it's pretty much non-visible from the road, um, and he's good with the 15 foot to the property line, uh, requirement, so. That fence is how high? Eight feet. And how high is your solar array? Um, it's a 35 degree tilt <coughs> from the from the beginning What's of the array. It's about not, it's nine feet, nine and a half feet. So you're looking at about a foot and a half. And we have a. Um, you, and you'll see the back side of the panel, right? Not the front side. No, yeah, you'll see the back side. I actually have a 3D visual uh, that we drew up of of his entire plot plan. If I might show some people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is 83. I know it's going to be hard for everyone to see. I don't know which there was thing. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so uh, let me go this way. Let me go out. So this is his property. Uh, there's the street. Here's his driveway. That's where the array is going to go. That's his fence. This is the property in front of him. The neighbor's already 
given permission to go ahead and put the, the system there. Um, uh, conservation committee's already approved having the system there as well. Um, now, if what we do, because this is all to scale, so if we look, if we go in and encroach upon this, this is the fence. This is all to scale with the Aurora. So this is an eight foot high fence. Uh, the array is a foot and a half off the ground, okay? And what you're gonna see is, well, it's kind of hard to, let me go, let me just go to the road, um, to the driveway angle here. So if we're here, Where's Rocky Hill Road? Well, you're going to see nothing right, right here. This is Rocky Hill Road. Yeah, way okay. up that way. All right. Well, it's it only gets lets me take a certain chunk. But if you look at it from this perspective here, so if we go to the corner of his driveway, there's woods right here. If you're, if you're, if you're east yeah. of Rocky Hill Road, there's all woods that's just going to hide it. The only place you're going to see it is from the west. Right. And if, so if you look from here, from this angle, right. This little, this little that's looking from northwest. Yeah, yeah. Because if you come from over from this side of the so you're going looking towards, in the direction towards, of southeast. This is going towards Northampton this way. You're looking southeast. That's correct. All right. So what you see right here, see this little strip right above the fence. That's all you're going to see. You're going to see about this much. If you're looking that way while driving 35 miles an hour watching the road, if you decide to glance that way, that's all you would ever see, is this little strip right here. And these two trees are now in the mix because they're on his property. So if you're looking from... But you don't show nothing from the other side. From, well, from this side. Like if you're going towards Amherst. Now, right. Right? Between There's his the house. tree line and... Here's and his fence. The dollar There's his sh Here's his little barn way back there, right? There's the barn. That little strip just above the fence is all you're going to see. Yeah, but what are you going to see this way? That's what you're yeah. not showing. Yep, I'm showing it. Uh, no, I can show it from, it from this way, right over here. All I'm doing is spinning it. So now we're looking from this vantage point going that way. There's his. There's the neighbor's house. There's Mount, the Moskin house. There's the Moskin barn. There's the Moskin fence. And all you're seeing is that, plus there's a lot more foliage on this side going that way than there is the other way. So, you know, there's very little, if any, you, the, the, there's a whole lot more, you know, ground mounts that you can see visually from this. This will be, you won't even be able to see the whole thing. You're just looking at this strip. Uh, so it's really not a, uh, a visual impact whatsoever. Yeah, your story. That's your feeling. <clears throat> and what what makes him he's gonna keep that, that wood fence there? What happens when that fence rocks? What he said is uh, pursuant to you know procuring the building permit for the job, he'll make sure that he has in writing that he will always have a fence there. Yeah, to what size? Whatever, whatever rules you want to put in place okay. will comply with them. It's just that he doesn't want to bring in any outside foliage or outside uh, trees that is not indigenous to his property. <clears throat> but yeah, he, he will write in, in writing if you want to have, make sure it's an eight foot fence. So the solar panels aren't indigenous to the property either. No, no, they're not indigenous, but it's not a... Uh, not fully, just not a plant, not well, a living. Well, you get my grip. Oh, yes. Sure. Yeah. I think they're much uglier looking than the uh, aprobatic tree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he just wants to put a, a ground mount there. In this, in front. Certainly all the neighbors have no objections, and I think uh, we're kind of splitting hairs. I think it's going to be most not very visible. I mean, I, I don't want to say never going to be visible, but I'm going to see next to nothing. Well, you see, put something looking. in black and white. About maintaining the fence? In the recording of the registry of deeds, that that fence will be there in the life of that solar panels. In a minimum of, they're eight, eight foot? Yep. 
the minimum of eight yep. foot high. Those are in the notes that he sent me that he's willing. To, yeah, absolutely, totally. We'll put that in writing for you guys. Can we see that agreement from him before we grant this? Well, can we just make it a contingent? If, if that's not part of the permit package, then you can't get a permit. Can we just do it that way instead of having to wait another two weeks? We're getting towards the end of the season. We'd like to get the project done. Well, in. just let them get it done and ship it down here. And that's, yeah, right. That's okay. Right, but I would, I'd like to be able to pull permits, though, and start the project. And if you make a contingent upon acquiring a permit, of course, it'll be in the paperwork and we'll forward it along to you for your review before the permit gets issued. But We'd like to try and, I mean, it's, it's October now, so we want to try and get it in before the, the snow falls. Yeah, if he puts it down and it's filed with the registry of deeds, I don't have any problem with it. Yeah. And if we make that a contingent, we have no problem complying with it. Okay. Okay, so, uh, the administrative review, it's been referred for interdepartmental review. As far as I know, we had no comments. Um, I'm going to take final action. Uh, we have the required documents. Uh, let's see, where's the design? We have the elevations, um, site control, we have insurance. to the minimum extent necessary. Um, ground clearance, soil permeability is not an issue. Wildlife corridors are not an issue. Setbacks. Um, approved 15 foot. Sorry, got set, setback. What is the link to that? Uh, Fence, the wooden fence. The length of it? Yeah. Uh, I can get you a measurement. That's a stockade fence, right? That's what they call that? Yeah, just your typical stockade fence. <clears throat> Let me just, uh, oh, I lost my Wi Fi, guys. Hang on one second. to 175 feet, somewhere in there. 170 feet, roughly speaking. Roughly, exactly. I have, I have a geopositioning measurement mm -hmm. device. It's about 170, 175, somewhere there. So owner to verify in writing that he will maintain an eight foot fence. The existing eight, eight, eight foot stock eight fence. Maintain or replace existing eight foot stock eight fence. Approximately 170. 175 feet in length. <clears throat>
waiving the sets at to from 50 feet to 15 feet. Correct. With the butter's consent. Okay. Just middle be nothing. We don't worry about the for administrative review. That's it's not a special permit, so okay. that's not part of the package. So with those two waivers, uh, I'll move that the administrative review is satisfied. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right. I will have him uh, get that letter. Now, when you say get it to the Registry of Deeds, um, educate me. I don't know what that means. There's no stamp. With registry well, he's, he, what he's asking for is a notarized affidavit mm -hmm. at the Registry of Deeds linked to the property deed saying that um, the case Mr. Moss can leave whoever the, whoever the next owner is will have to maintain the fence yep. right. for as long as that solar for the life of the right. Gotcha. Yep. Understood. Okay. Completely. You guys need anything else from me? Nope. We're good. Have a great night. Thank you. Mr. Roberts, you're here for anything special or just to listen to Mr. Barry, Mr. Larry? Mr. Larry, okay. Larry, you're up. I'm up. Uh, I cool. don't have much more relative to the, your issue. Um, I mean, we did, did give you a... Before we get into this, before we get on to a new topic, can you bring, I've been to send you an email, can you bring the um, master plan next time? Uh, or can you just drop it off at my office? Sometime? Oh my god, yes. Or leave from my office. I actually had to step over them to yeah. get either, out. Either, either in his office or my house, whichever is easier for you. You, you live up there. Do you think that's, I a, a, I you think that's a joke? Uh, I'll I'll keep it on the floor. Once, once I get the dust off one. of them, I'll bring them on. Are you saying you keep it on the floor? They're in boxes. Oh, okay. They're in boxes. <laughs> this, this you're right way. And I put them right at the entrance of my cubicle, so I'll remember them. And I just, <clears throat> your employer I just got so used to stepping over them for the last two months that it's like it's too far. Does your employer know you're created a tripping hazard? <laughs> <laughs> oh. So the issue, uh, I mean, the last time we came, I suggested a quick fix just to try to address their, their problem. And the thought was to, uh, no, don't go with the quick fix. Let's see if we can incorporate the two together. I'm still working on that. I have gone out. The other issue was determining, you know, what the value is going to be and what the quid pro quo is going to be. And uh, I've gone and talked to a number of communities that have similar bylaws and the response I typically get is, you know, oh, we don't have that either, uh, type thing. So what I'm hoping is, is anybody going to be going to that? Uh, 18th, yes. Uh, Good. Everybody but Joe. So do, if we let you know, can you let the proper person of PVPC know? So we got four going? Yes. 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 You know, I I will go. You will go. Oh, oh yeah, oh, look at him. Peer, peer pressure. <laughs> right. Peer pressure. <laughs> there he goes. But the second half of that workshop, which I think everybody should stay for, and that's designed to have the people who currently have trusts operating, kind of brainstorming and spitballing back and forth in the war stories. And I think that's probably the uh, as important a part of that, that workshop as any of it's going to be. Sure. And so that's where I kind of want to talk to them about well, what are you doing? How do you address this? You know, because uh, Joe, Joe has some questions as well. And, you know, based on numbers that Tom gave out, Attorney Reedy gave out yeah. last time out, we stand at this percent, we have this many houses on, on the market. Yeah. It'll take us, a pro at, at our going rate, it'll <clears> take us somewhere around 50 years, give or take, yeah. just to drop to 10% at our current rate. So if we get this money, you know, what do we do with it? Well, what about this? And I got a few ideas. I don't know if we can do it. Yeah. Okay. So we put it into a fund. Okay. Granted, we're not going to get one for one and all kind of good stuff. But we have this money in a fund. Maybe over some time, can we use the money for both maybe making, getting a house and renovating it, other yeah. the thing? Can we use it for maintenance of our existing <coughs> facilities? You know, those are questions I have. Because if we can use it for maintenance and keeping up what we have, that's also very mm -hmm. helpful as opposed to pulling from any place else. We hear about, oh, we don't have money for this, we don't have money for this, we got doors that don't close, and, you know, 
just on and on and on. Well, if you get a farm that's got a little bit of money in it, can, can, it, can it be used for maintenance? I don't know. Could it be used what? to renovate the North Alley Hall? No, no, no. no, no, no. Ma ma maintain existing affordable. affordable housing units. Nothing else. Not, it definitely could not be used for anything in town other than maintaining an existing affordable units. Don't tell units. me something that didn't drain the swamp. Well, that's, well <laughs> if it's only for affordable, then it's not, they can't drain it very quickly. Um, so, you know, those are questions. Yeah. And I'm not, you know, can it be, can the, could, could, is that a possibility? Would it have to be owned by the town, not by individuals? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, and that, well, that would be like the Golden Court it, section. It, it depends what trustees have to operate within the law, and they can determine how it's spent. Well, those are exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. You yeah. know? I, I just think this workshop is just so unbelievably timely. Yeah, uh, exactly, exactly, exactly. When I saw when I saw, when yeah. I saw that come through, I said, "Boy, is that is that the perfect?" <laughs> I, 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 my feeling is like, did you see this? What I think with Joe as well, the grammy thing. I, I can tell you, in large part, that workshop is a result it's, of right. your it's, issues. It's what the development yeah. yeah. build those houses and put that on yeah. the end. We're not the contractors. That that seems yeah. like a simple solution. But it's, it's we're going to be monitoring yeah, yeah. it. <clears throat> Guaranteed, it's not simple. It's very complicated. In fact, it's all complicated. Well, how do we uncomplicate it? I'm not. That's <laughs> what <laughs> not the, 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 the state has designed it. Yes. Yes. That's I mean, a, it's one of those things that other uh, communities are doing this, aren't they? No. Nobody in the Commonwealth. Uh, no, there are some that have trusts, and, and, as, and right now it's not a large group. Um, and there are a number of communities that have inclusionary zoning bylaws that don't offer the in lieu of payment option. Right. Do, do any of those communities have developers build those affordable houses on their project? Um, they're not. Uh, like, yeah. That's what I want to find out. Well, yeah. Th these are great questions. Thing, yeah. Instead of asking Larry to give us the answer to these, these are questions yeah. that are like open ended. These are things we want to find out when yeah. we go to this workshop. But, yeah. We've got to explore the possibilities. You know, one of the possibilities is that at the rate we're developing now, I mean, it could be 50, 60 years before we hit that threshold of 10% again. Mm -hmm. And there are towns around us Hatfield, Sunderland, Granby, all touching in South Hadley. That have three or four percent. Yeah, they're way up. They're way down. They're way down, and you know what? The wolf is not at their door to make the ten percent. Right. On the other hand, the good news about the trust fund is the fact that if we have that money set aside, and all of a sudden we get a, a few large-scale developments and it begins to close in on us, we have the ability to build only affordable units. Whereas if a developer comes in with a uh, 40B goes through the uh, ZBA, right. only, tw what is it, 25% right. have to be affordable, another 75%, so you could have... Right, but remember, if they're rental units, you get to count all 100%. Right, we understand that. How many, that's, how that's many affordable yeah. units in town yeah. may the occupant opt to purchase? Right. We have 285. Uh, how many are... None. Oh, none. 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 So I, that's, would, I would say none. <clears throat> but I would say too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because and, and the rentals aren't the management issues. It's the ownership ones that uh, yeah, are problematic. And, and, and this is all something that we're trying to stay ahead of the curve. Yeah. And 50 years down the road, we don't want to design something today knowingly 50 years down the road is going to create a problem. Right. If we can stay ahead of the curve <clears throat> and plan for that, that's yeah. all we're trying to do. We don't need to. We, we don't need to take action in the next couple of years. We simply need to plan to take action right. and have something, a fund or something, where we can utilize that. That, like Joe says, something comes in, we can be ready to strike. Because if you got, you know, some number comes in and it puts us at the ten percent or whatever it is, it's not going to take a whole lot of affordable units to bring us back up. Oh, that's true. But we'll be okay. sitting on this. This fund this pot of gold if we're not utilizing it are we in jeopardy of there's got to be somebody's going to say look you got to put it to use or yeah you use it or lose it you yeah. won't lose it because it's dedicated if it, if it, yeah and if it's well, th th these are yeah. questions for the affordable yeah. for, the, for this for this workshop yeah. exactly 
you know. And, and, and uh, another note, we, uh, we will be going and getting certified by the state and do the training to be uh, certified to do the monitoring. Oh, you will? Yeah. That's great. Yeah, that is great. And then we got to find out what the fee's going to be for you to do that. It's... There he goes laughing again. It's, well, it's a lot of like work, boy. I, I, I sat down and pulled the regs on as I know you did, uh, and looked at what you, what you have to go through, and it's not, uh, it's not easy. It's not simple. Right. And that's great. And, and that's why we yeah. want to have this fun. We want the options. <clears throat> and we, well, let me say it this way. We think we want the options. Yes. yes. <laughs> we don't right. know That's yet. Better. That's, That's better. We think we want the option of either or. And the workshop will at least give us some, it'll probably confuse us more than it'll tell us. But, well, but at least yeah. it'll give us the questions a bit more knowledge. But, but what you will have in the room are people who have the trust and are operating under it and will have the more stories. Right. What worked and what hasn't worked. Right. So what if, what if you had somebody that was going to buy one of these things and we say, okay, you, you meet the qualifications income wise. And he goes to the bank and he said, your credit's terrible and you can't get a loan. Mm -hmm. That's an issue. Could we use the trust to uh, make a loan to him, a mortgage? No, no. So that's a good question. Yeah, add, add that to the list. That's right. I, I, th think, I think what you're going to find, unfortunately, is m many of these people that are low income they're not don't own credit places, worthy. Right? They're not credit yeah, worthy. I think that's, that's true. Yeah. Uh, but yet there are lots that are. So it's finding the right, mm -hmm. the right, you know, the right one for the right fit. So <clears throat> to get past our immediate hurdle, yes. I think we, we, we seem to agree that the inclusionary zoning bylaw does not work right. as anticipated and the inclusionary paragraph in the senior housing doesn't work as anticipated. So it seems like the one option, I won't call it the best option, I'll just call it one option, is to and I don't know if we can suspend a zoning bylaw. We need town you meeting town approval. Meeting. Well, no, I, I know we need town yeah. meeting yeah. approval, but I'm thinking yeah. that. I mean, um, if you're looking for the quick, the quick fix to address the, their issue, I gave you what I thought was relatively clean, yeah. quick way of doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, that is not the final solution. You know, that's just a quick fix. Right. This is a stopgap. Yeah. And, and I, I think. We can't make a decision tonight. Well, in, in two weeks, we're going to have some information on this workshop. Okay? <clears throat> and I'd be willing to bet whatever we propose, because of reasons we've been going over for the last several months, getting it to the, to the Springtown meeting and getting it approved will not be an issue. Because we're, tr yeah. we're trying to do the right thing, but we're trying to do it cautiously. Yeah. We're not trying to just jump in and jump thinking. And I'm guessing that if we come up with a fund and we think it's got a good chance of passing, it'll put Mr. Roberts where he wants to be without any extreme hardship. Mm -hmm. It'll give us something to deal with. And, you know, okay, that, that's what we have. We may have to, we, the, the actual trust may require a lot of fine tuning. But at least if we have the option and the fund, okay. Now we can appropriately, for lack of a better word, design this fund to do what we hope it can do. Yeah. But if we come up with more questions, Bill is right. We have to resolve Barry Roberts' dilemma yep. and our dilemma as well. Yes. And I see the two options. One is uh, just have them build the, the five units and not put them in the trust fund or Let's set up a trust fund. Right. Well, once if we do set up the trust fund, how do we fund it? How do we know how much to fund it? And that's going to be a give and take between Barry Roberts and the planning board. But uh, those are our two options we've got to address fairly soon. And, and I, I think the issue with the trust fund is, you know, whether uh, it works for you. Yes. So how are we going to know that? Well, and, you know, you know, it, it's, you should it's, be, you, it's, after this meeting, you find when you get to talk to the towns and hear from the towns that are doing it. Um, you know, can they do it with just the 
trust fund, or do they, does the trust fund have to go out and hire somebody to do it? I want to know if there's any towns, uh, if you can find out before that even happens. Yeah. So, any towns that the developer builds the affordable units. Yeah, I'm sure Amherst has them. So let's see, if, if we do suspend... And, and the developer pays the whole tab and that goes on our inventory. Uh, no, he, he, it doesn't go under the inventory unless they're built. I know, but they says if the developer builds it, that goes on our inventory as soon as they're sold, correct? You, and to get it on the inventory, there's a process the town has to go through. Because this is not a, a typical project, it's uh, part of a state or a federal under, uh, subsidy program. Um, what's it called? Local initiative. Uh, you have to file for it. You get it put on the. You get the units put on the uh, included in your uh, subsidized housing. Site. So you're saying Amherst does this already? I would bet if, if you're thinking of a community around here, Amherst has probably done that. Yeah. So who would administer in, that, in Amherst? Again, it's probably rental, and rental is not really, really is not a real big no. issue. It's yeah, the, right. The ownership ones of the exactly. Box. So if this, this one here yeah. is ownership, yeah. not not a rental. Yeah. So we know in Amherst that there are inclusionary <laughs> rental units yeah. because there's a developer who right. recently got all over the front page of the Gazette for not having the units available. Um, but yeah, that's a. I guess that's a good question. If yeah. there is an answer to it, who has an inclusion? Who has an inclusionary zoning? program that involves the developer building units for sale. Right. So, Leonard, what is the benefit to a potential owner to own the property as opposed to renting it if you don't have any potential price appreciation dictated by the market? What, well, why would someone want to do that? Uh, which? Rent own. Why would someone want to own something if there's all these restrictions on basically now we're talking about the 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 uh, perspective affordable homeowner. You know? Correct, correct. Why would somebody want to own it if, in fact, there are all these restrictions based on the economic benefit that it can get? Because you know? there are no other options. To no, them? no rentals. Well, not if they want to be a home. Not if they want to. Not if they want to own. Well, why would they? Why would they want equity. to own? Well, well, where, what's, where's the equity? It, it, it's still appreciating. It's not just not as appreciating as much as the market units are. Only if. The average income in Massachusetts goes up and not down. If it goes down, then then you're going to have to value the property at a lesser it's not lesser so much value. The income, it's the uh, price of the housing. So, but back to the bill's issue at, at hand, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we've got to get governed over by the state. Mm -hmm. it? Barry, ought, he's sitting on these units, or he's potentially sitting, waiting to build or not to build, and. Uh, could we suspend that section of the bylaw? Let's say we do suspend that section of the bylaw until we can get something really that we kind of agree on. Yeah. Uh, or so Barry's four up. units. If Barry builds these five units, isn't it? Five units. Uh, the percentage that will drop is two tenths of one percent. So it's not like we're giving him a great favor, but. Uh, at least we're getting him off the snide. I mean, mm -hmm. we've got to do something because we we got him into this mess. Why can't it be postponed until we do get straightened this mess out? Postpone those, keep those five lots available. Yeah. Well, well, he's well, he's made it. Okay, the, the problem is, it's going to be interspersed. You can't put the five units at the end. Yeah. Well, let's. And if you intersperse them and he builds around them, he's already run that problem with, with a couple of his units where he, un, 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 unintentionally, will save one or two lots for some reason. There's a house on either side of it. Yeah. And to put the foundation, he had to pump the concrete at considerable extra right. cost. Right. And so you don't want to have him reserve five foundations throughout the property and have to pump the foundation. You're going to make these houses extremely expensive by doing it. So you want to go one after the other to get the stuff in. I understand that. Um, he's getting close. I mean, I don't think he's going to hit it right away, but we need to give him some kind of direction. Exactly right. Yeah. Um, I personally think the trust fund is going to go through, and I think we're going to relieve him of a lot of these issues yeah. 
by allowing him to put into the trust fund because I personally think that's going to be a good thing, a good option. I'll tell you well, something. Well, then I, I, I can't do. say that for me because I don't know if that is. What is the other? I want to know the whole story. I'm not trying to push my opinion on anybody. Right. I'm simply giving you I'm not my pushing single the opinion. Yet, yeah. till okay. I know the whole, the complete story. Well, you know, John, you're, you're right, but it may take several months. It may take a year for us to really resolve. There's going to be some towns in the Commonwealth. It can't be yeah. just Hadley that we're in this situation and nobody in the Commonwealth has addressed it. It's just yeah. since the Affordable House Trust Fund passed in 2005, approximately seven communities have established trust funds. Yeah. yeah. So The trust so, funds, right. So, well, that's and, what we're talking about. You know, we're, we're trying to resolve, we're trying to get to a solution the tonight. I don't know why. why or something you we want to do. The trust fund. We don't need a recommendation you know tonight. Oh well, yeah, you're exactly right. They're, they're going to do the this start. meeting is the oh. day after our next meeting. Mm -hmm. So the first meeting in November, we should have at least have an idea yeah. of where we're going to go. The trust one is either possible yeah. or not possible, and it's going to take a lot of ironing out. I agree to do the right design of it. Mm -hmm. But at least after this meeting, we should have a better idea amongst this group that we think it's feasible or not. And if you want to volunteer to be the trustees. Well, that's, that's the next point. But I'm smiling because Hadley's zoning was a reaction to Amherst's zoning. Amherst said, we love apartments. And Hadley said, if you love apartments, have them. We don't want any apartments. And Amherst said, no to business. The Zayers Mall was supposed to go where uh, University yeah. Drive is in Stop and Shop. Yeah. But Amherst said no. So Hadley said, we'll take it. Plus, they put the whole sewer line in on Route 9. So yeah. development follows sewers. So now we're saying, let's do it like Amherst does. Some of these guys are rolling over in their grave. Well, but well Amherst only adopted their inclusionary zoning bylaw a year or two ago. Uh, I'm not it's, saying that we should do it like Amherst did, right. because they, I, Amherst doesn't have any own inclusionary zone. Right. Well, let's let's hear from what Barry or. Do you know about any? I mean, I know Amherst has rental apartments. Right. They, right. Any time that a special permit is required for the underlying use, if you have more than nine units, then you trigger having a for, an affordable component to it. So. Right. The Amherst Motel, for example, is proposing 131 units of rental. 12% of those, or 16 units, need to be qualified in the subsidized housing inventory. That process is going to go through the Amherst Housing Authority. They do the affirmative marketing plan. They qualify the units, and then they recertify them annually. But again, that's rental. Um, we've talked with, because this is ownership, we've talked with Valley CDC, who is involved with different, you know, in different percentages based upon their scope of work for purchases. So that tells me that there are communities that do have these purchase programs. I know a lot of the time HAP housing or some governmentally funded entity will be the ones that actually put those houses there. And there, there are resale limits. There's a maximum resale limit. And quite frankly, if you can't find um, somebody who's income eligible, then after it's probably 120 days, um, that falls off the subsidized housing inventory rolls and can actually be sold at market rate. So it's not just because you have that deed restriction doesn't mean it's in perpetuity if through the program you can't find somebody that qualifies. Right. Um, but East, East Campton also might have some because they've done a number of uh, the mills and stuff. Yep. And I think some of those are ownership. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would imagine that they've done it. I don't know of any off the top of yeah. my head. Um, but from, you know, I deal with a lot of different municipalities, and they like to have the flexibility of an affordable housing trust. Not that they will always use it, because in certain circumstances, it's better to have the units built. But they like to have the option when it just doesn't make sense based on the development. In a lot of the ownership situations, they find it doesn't make sense, because with the rentals, it still qualifies on the subsidized housing inventory, and you don't necessarily have the resale issues, uh, it potentially falling off of the subsidized housing inventory that you do in those ownership contexts. Would the Valley CDC be one of the options for overseeing? Yes, so it's someone that Barry had actually 
I've had breakfast with a couple of times, I think. Uh, you know, there, there's a, uh, a woman who's on our finance committee is on their board, and maybe that would be helpful for us to see what our options are with them. But, but that's another story. Yeah, and I mean, you start to get, it, it, they charge between 6 and 8% of the purchase price to do what they're looking to do. Okay. Um, yeah. So, you know, you can, as you know, there is yeah. a lot of work that it's, goes into it in the states overseeing. I mean, we, exactly. We, we, that's exactly right. And somebody was mentioning yeah. either Mike or John down there. Now we have to get another board. Uh, yeah. We can barely, barely get people to run for right. select board. Right. I mean, I can tell you that we had at PDBC a real conversation on whether we wanted to do this or not. Mm -hmm. uh, once we really started pulling out what it took. Because uh, it's, it's all of us. Yes. Who's the executive director? You know. Well, you can find out. Yeah, and I I know her as well because she doesn't. They don't do rentals. Because I had I have some rental projects over in Amherst, and I said because Amherst Housing Authority has a corner on the market there, and they charge nine thousand dollars for the affirmative marketing plan, and then a couple of thousand dollars for the rental units just to qualify them and then $750 annually for this recertification. Wow. And so, yeah, I mean, and that starts to, if you have a development like Amherst you Motel, know, you're talking about $40,000 before even getting off the ground and yeah. building it. So, I mean, that's that's yeah. real money for Holy developers. Yeah. Um, and so I looked to Valley CDC to see if they had some alternative, just so it wasn't a monopoly. And Joanne, something. Joanne? Yeah, yeah, I, I could look it up, I don't know. Oh, Joanne Campbell. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they weren't interested in doing, at least they didn't have a formula yet for their rental and what they would be looking to do. So it's it's somewhat of a cottage industry. There are a lot of outfits out of Boston. You know, anytime you get in touch with DHCB, they'll give you a list of who you can, lottery agents is what they call them, who you can talk to. And the great majority of them are from the eastern part of the state. And so, for example, um, presidential apartments who's a client they went through the regulatory agreement piece that's the one that you've seen in the paper with uh, the local initiative program and local action units and the town is actually a signatory to the regulatory agreement so now you've got the town's involvement so it's town DHCD and developer all part of it and quite frankly there I talked to Amherst Town Council at length because you've got you know, three different parties looking to negotiate this agreement. So it, it's a once you start to dive into the details, I think yeah. you can see that that thread just keeps going and you get to a web that you don't necessarily, I mean, especially my personal thing is you look at the number of uh, units you have on a subsidized housing inventory and um, the list that is most recent is December of 2014. I'm waiting for an updated list from the state based upon year-round housing units and subsidized housing inventory. So there may be some fluctuation. They said they should have that out in the next few weeks. But especially as Mr. Zagrovic said, if you look at compared to South Hadley and Granby and Hatfield and some of these other municipalities, Hadley's in a fantastic position to sock away those funds, build some if it's appropriate in appropriate locations, but sock away those funds and just be ahead of the curve should anything happen. And that's another issue too. I mean, if all of a sudden we as the town are going to locate this housing next to somebody's property, wow. Yeah. Uh, okay. But as Barry said, we, can pick, we as the town can pick a piece of property that is free of uh, conflict and choose to put units there rather than letting a developer put them I, there. I, that is a yeah. valid, strong valid yeah. point. Yeah. Well, you know that developers often use 40B projects as a, a sword <laughs> to leverage the town to allow the project that they really want. A sword or a threat? Uh, <laughs> it's a new kind of robbery. Well, I mean, that's it. And so happily you had it. Yes, it happened that's exactly to them. It They went in and somebody said, I'm going to do a 40B here. Yep. Or, I'll reduce the density and do these condominiums, or I'll reduce the density and do these townhomes. And the town says, okay, yeah, that, that's great, because there's just a lot of infrastructure and oversight that go into these affordable developments. Well, actually, the town first said no. Right. And then he, he came forward with a 40B, yeah. and the town said, wait a minute. Yeah, we didn't mean no. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No. By the Connecticut River? Yeah. 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 Okay. My question to you, Larry, who is the agency in charge of this state agency? Uh, right now, it's DHCD. Department of Housing and Community Development. 
No, would they they should have a record of who does this and who's building what in the state. Yeah, they, they probably do. So is yeah. that the place to call to find yeah. out? Yeah. yeah, Bill Rail is the. Uh, uh, list there are four towns. R E Y E L T. R E what? R E Y. Yeah, I don't have L T. Because he's the one I contacted to find out about how you get certified to do all of this. What's his first name? William. And that is what, what Department of what? Housing and Community Development. I, I don't know which ones have that uh, the program, but I, I can find out. And I can Marshfield, I think, is one of them. Yeah. I mean, they're fairly affluent communities. Yeah, they're primarily eastern. Yeah. 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 A lot of this trickles out to yeah. the western part of the state just yeah. because we're in the Commonwealth. What, what you'll find, is, is, is you know, for a lot of the towns that we do have, that do have inclusionary bylaws, they get a lot of nine lot subdivisions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. Right. Right. Just, just so they don't trigger it. Right. Well, I mean, have is the same. I think it's a yep. seven lot. Anything over a seven lot subdivision triggers having an affordable component to it. So right. I wouldn't be surprised if you see a couple of frontage lots and then you know five lot subdivision in between. We've been there, right? which I recall yeah. from memory that I I see. The Ridge one coming down the road. I think that's got about eight lots. They know they're going to have to comply. Mm -hmm. Yes, that small subdivision off Shattuck. I think it was. Yeah. 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 Which, I mean, is it appropriate? How do you value that? Is it appropriate to put one affordable unit up there away from public transit? Um, yeah, it's a tough, et cetera. Everything is tough. What does that mean, an affordable lot or affordable building on the lot? It's an affordable building on the lot, and that building has to look not dissimilar from the non-affordable right. units in yeah, the building. You're building million dollar houses, how are you gonna do that? Well, you- Potemkin Village. <laughs> Inside, you don't get the granite countertops. You have a facade, but <laughs> yeah, one room inside. That's yeah, it. I mean that's that's yeah. that's in there. Well, and that's why I think the payment in lieu. Yeah. I mean that makes sense just like this development, sure. and then it does give yeah. the town the control. Of the I mean, it cuts both ways. Sure. You know, there's something to be said about being inclusionary and included, so you're diluting it rather than concentrating it all in one area. Um, so it it cuts. There to are, me, I there ideal, are good arguments both ways. So. Ideal if our housing authority would take this on, but they specifically said they don't want no part of this. I don't, I don't blame them. I don't think they necessarily <laughs> knew how much money was to be made. Right. <laughs> 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 they would make money, they would make well, nothing. Well, well, they they have have Tom this. just told us what the Amherst Housing Authority charges. Yeah. In this town, look at they're ready to cut everybody's pay yeah. now. What are you talking about? Where are you? But the Amherst Authority has a pretty robust staff. Right. Yes. Uh, they uh, they are pretty well funded, yeah. and I mean it. It takes work. I mean that yeah. residential apartments took three years to get it to get that regulatory agreement finally accepted by the state and the affirmative marketing plan accepted. So I mean, there was, and that's where the developer had just left those units. He had them unoccupied. For those for that amount of time and wasn't getting any rent no. from them. I mean, so that's why that's the real reaction. I think to Mr. Sozinski's point, the develop the developer said, well, what if we hold these and they can't qualify for a mortgage or they can't qualify? Their yeah. credit stinks. They can't pay the rent. You know, these are the things that it does fall on the developer's shoulders to have to keep these units offline, and it's an added cost. So, so if we. What are our options according to our zoning bylaws to get this situation off the hook? Well, if we do, uh, let's say we don't have a lot of options. We don't adopt the inclusionary trust fund within yeah. four or five months. I mean, as it is now, so as, I, as, I, as I understand the bylaw, you do not have the lieu of payment option under that. So we would have to amend the bylaw under the senior housing section. So what I had given you was essentially the wording out of your inclusionary zoning that offer the in lieu of payment and plug that into the senior housing. Could so they go to the ZBA? They get a variance? Yeah. They can have, you know, so yeah, I mean, I guess the money, money, our options would be yeah. either a use variance yeah. or because I think that... Well, use variance you can't get. In, in Hadley, they allow... They permit use variance in Hadley? Hadley. Yes. Gee whiz. I love about Hadley. They um, do. <laughs> um, so there is one town so in the state. It is, there's actually, I, uh, Westboro, I think, is another town. 
<laughs> but that's besides the point. So that's funny. Um, and without that would result. But this is um, we could also look to because the condition in this permit yeah. specifically says that we have to qualify in the subsidized housing inventory. And if you look at the senior housing overlay bylaw, that's not a requirement. Right. So we were thinking, can we modify this special permit through opening a public hearing, coming back in front of the board and requesting a modification to essentially switch, swap out one non-requirement, the qualification on subsidized housing inventory, for another non-requirement, payment in lieu. So we would say, we would offer, um, we would be willing to pay whatever that number is to, we can put it into escrow, we can contribute it to CPA, we can put it in some fund that we can gift it to the town to be held until spring town meeting. And then that can initially be that nest egg that funds the um, affordable housing trust. And so I mean, we saw that as a, a viable option and an immediate option. You know, We can submit the application and be on the November hearing um, for you to swap out those two provisions, take out the qualification on the subsidized housing inventory, put in, you know, the developer will pay 70, 80, whatever that number is, $1,000 per unit in lieu of actually providing the unit. So you think there's something in that section of the bylaw that gives the board the legal authority to swap that out even though that's not in the bylaw? I would say that adding the qualification on the subsidized housing inventory because that was not in the bylaw yeah. and they've exceeded that. I could say, I would say, and I will say, <laughs> that they could find that as a condition of this permit, they can deem that provision satisfied because we are providing a payment in lieu. Now, how soon do you need to some kind of a uh, oh, decision? No, yes. Good question, Jim. Uh, for Mr. Roberts not to be behind the eight ball. <laughs> Probably yesterday, <laughs> Last year? to be honest. But um, I mean, it's, 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 it's the sighting of the when he's laying I, I, out I understand. The so you're you're saying that like the Maytown meeting is too far away for, yeah, for this decision. Really, okay, yeah. th th that's what I'm kind of looking for. Like, we 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 need to do something between now. And May, the sooner the better, obviously, so that you're not behind the eight ball, have to go start pumping concrete and force you into a whole lot of extra expense for no good reason. I think we need to get our act together and either have this guy here do some homework and some research that how can we make, he understands what's going on here, how can we make this work? I gave you that. And not, not getting the town last month. In, in such a mess, we can't get out of it. And then there's more turmoil on top of it. I gave you last month, and did you, did you check take a look at it? Yeah, I yes, so. I sent you a copy of it. Okay. That was the quick fix. It, it would have been its own change and allowed the little right. payment right. as you do with that. Well, once, you, once you set this trust up, can it ever be dissolved? Uh, we'll find out when we go to Probably that Probably the town can vote to it. I don't want yeah, to figure out what do you do with yeah, the, the, the money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. A quick fix. What about the long long term fix? Is there a fall coming? In the long term, yes, it's yes, 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 Thursday. Thursday. Oh God. Okay. Well, <laughs> you're not getting for that. The problem. This on the fall town meeting. That's why I was here tonight trying to understand what. Well, we were we were trying to yeah. we. When we talked to Larry yeah. a month ago, we had some questions about the the the, the, the wording of the problem. And normally the fall town meeting is the end of October, and because it was moved to the early part of October this year, we said, you know, we weren't going to be, we weren't going to have anything ready. Right. Bottom line, yeah, we were hoping to get something in. Yeah, but because of the yeah, timing because of because of the timing and the, and the moving of the date. Yeah, it is what it is. I'm not complaining. about just making a statement that we weren't going to make it. And so, I think well, Trying to make a decision tonight on this isn't going to is, is, is not going to happen because we, we don't have any information. At least after the 18th, what we can do is we don't have we will. I don't think we have the authority to do what Mr. Re Attorney Reedy is suggesting. Right. However, possibly a joint meeting, joint public hearing, if it's needed, mm -hmm. of the ZBA mm -hmm. and the Planning Board to address exactly what you're talking about is a possibility so that they have the authority to move Indeed, things around we yeah. have the authority to do some other things and then you would modify be, so between the two of us so why would it be a use there 
Yeah. So I guess variance is either fall into dimensional or use, and I don't. Well, it's either use or it's a variance from the requirement of that exactly. section. Right. right. Would it make any sense? Well, I'm not sure it's a use. Would it, would it make any sense if Bill Dwyer contacted town council on this issue to find out the legality of what really needs to be done in this? I'm sure Copeland and Page has, you know worked on these kind of projects throughout well, the state. Well, we got the same type of opinion that told us that we had to put the five college building over there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So oh, boy, we were going with that. I'm so gonna, I'm going to suggest okay. that uh, that Jim's hybrid of a joint meeting makes a certain amount of sense, makes a lot of sense. We adopted the Senior Housing Overlay District in 2008. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're coming up on uh, uh, t May of 2008, so we're coming up on 10 years, and this is the sole project we have had. Yep. And <clears throat> at that rate, um, you know, this may be is the it, only is this, project. Is this, is this, Johnny talked about the long term. Is this the long term yet? <laughs> uh, this may be the only project we have. I'll remind, I'll remind how, my how do you know that? John Maynard, uh, John Maynard Kane's comment well, about well, the never, long term. Okay. Okay. No, no, so long point. term, we're all dead. Okay. Well, never mind the comments. Let, let's get to the okay. real facts. So the point is, I think that we're in a situation where we've been working on this for 10 years, more intensely for about uh, almost four years. Um, I'm, this is a classic. We're not setting any precedents by what we do here. This is feeling our way on the first one out of the, out of the gate. Uh, and I just don't think... Uh, it, you know, even even what Tom had originally proposed of our modifying this uh, because of the circumstances surrounding this particular project, we don't seem to have authority in here to waive provisions right. of the bylaw like we do in site plan approval. Um, but on the other hand, uh, especially when there so much effort has gone into trying to figure out a way to get out, out around a problem that we had a hand in creating. Basically, it's like uh, proving um, cell towers where the bylaw doesn't allow them. You know, it, if we go ahead and, and vote a solution that works for this project, um, no one's going to appeal it. I still, it's, it's the next project. I still would like to see this gone through the town council for the legality of what mm -hmm. we should do. You could explain to them the situation we're in, what do we need to fix it? We will have an opportunity to speak with uh, town council on Thursday night, but right. we're waiting for a quorum. <laughs> <laughs> All in five minutes. <laughs> well, but we, 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 we've gotten lots of, lots of discussion with a couple minutes, well, well with Joel Bard, prior to town meetings on multiple occasions because what we're paying for him anyway, so yeah. we ask him some questions and usually, usually, he'll give us some some guidance. Mm -hmm. Other times when he can, he'll look like and say, huh. How would, he even be, how, how would he even be prepared to answer this, not knowing anything, coming to town meeting and not knowing anything about it? Right there? Yeah, Nobody right. Fill them in. That's, that's well, a good point. Here we got a bunch of lawyers in the I, room. I, I, Boy, I, oh, that's good. That's the whole point, uh, though. Yeah, you know, I, there's there's really no precedence here. I know we don't set precedents, but Bill's saying we could set a precedent. I think. Well, that's much set a precedent, but gnaw uh, uh, our way out of this little cage that we're <laughs> caught in. This is like a guessing game. <laughs> no. uh, I'm, I'm not how carefully I'm not voting for them. Just guessing crap. <laughs> we're, 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 we're looking for any votes on this. <laughs> well, how about just foregoing putting the money in the trust fund is a Okay, forget the uh, the five affordable units. Go ahead and build all market rate units, and then the risk we run is two tenths of one percent from our thirteen percent affordable percentage. Yeah, how do you know that's the best interest of the town? That that very well may be the best and the simplest thing. And it may very well be not. But I don't think you have the not, ability John. to do that. That's John, correct. I. I you said it was a good idea or a bad idea? I said it could be very well not. It could go either way. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, and, and, well, although for these six units, 
which again may be the only six units we're ever five for these five units, which may be the only five <laughs> units that we're ever going to see. Um, and maybe not. I well, would. You know, it may be six units if you're if you're upping by five numbers the market rate. Well, go ahead. You've got. So go ahead. So I was going to make a point. Yeah, there's just uh, you know there's. Just no precedence to be set here. Yeah. This is a very unusual situation yeah. Yeah. that has been years in yeah. process. And um, <coughs> we, we if, yeah, if we end up successfully modifying, so what Tom is proposing is that we basically say, okay, we'll accept payment in lieu uh, by some contortions, but we'll accept payment in lieu in. in um, and then we have a, it gets approved, it's blessed retroactively. <coughs> if it doesn't get approved at town meeting, um, we may still have, we may have to revisit it. Uh, well, and that's where maybe the joint ZBA planning board hearing to go through the variance process in the yeah, I think having them make comment. you a payment that's right, because this is a big question mark. complicated for a town meeting. Yeah. The, Z, the ZBA yeah. would have the authority to suspend the five units. Yes. And I don't mean cancel, I'm talking suspend. I guess I think what we would be looking for is just, well, either a cancellation or just a payment in lieu. To be so, we would you would have that money. The town would have right. that money, and then, as Bill is suggesting, if in May the Affordable Housing Trust passes, that money would go immediately into that. Trust. Right. But, but if, the, the, if the, the, the reason it's probably cleaner, the, 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 the money would go to the, some other some other institution. He would. Yeah. Right. We could come up with whether it's CPA getting the funds, whether it's the Hadley Housing Authority getting the funds. You could put it in the TDR fund. Yes. So something that makes sense for this particular application yes. because like Bill says the, the quagmire we're in we're not trying to we're not trying to do anything sneaky here right, right. we have put ourselves into a unintentionally by trying to do the right thing we put ourselves into a place where we don't we, we don't want to overly punish you and we certainly don't want to do the wrong thing for the town right. and in the long term we think we have them. We think we have some ideas for the right thing, but we need a whole lot more information. Sure. Town council has to uh, approve the thing, anyways, before yeah. it goes to there. The so the, any article would have to go to town council. Why to don't you talk to him to get some information about maybe they have done this for another community? If if you are planning on doing the ZBA, what the hell is that even talking? My suggestion would be just to keep it clean and not get mucked up with this floating money mm -hmm. uh, that was given for one thing and now we've got to use it for something else, which I think is going to be really problematic. Mm -hmm. um, I would not go that route. I would go with the route of just get a variance from the requirement from that section for the okay. units. Okay. Um, Substitute in lieu for in kind. Yeah, or something like that. It's just, just having this nebulous bond or a little payment floating around yeah, which will work out great if you do have the trust ultimately but if you don't have the trust um i'm not sure you can use it for a tdr because it was given well, with a big i mean doesn't seem with like a very sure about anything we could if we had done this if we knew we yeah. were going to get into this situation probably before yeah. but we could have gone and said we want a variance from the affordability requirements exactly. so that we don't either we don't want to have to provide them or right. we would like to instead provide i mean quite frankly whatever right because at that point you're getting exception from the zoning bylaws so that's why we had just suggested just so very well like this but so though he's not getting away without doing anything i mean of course we yeah. would prefer that sure um but understanding the process that we're going through if you know it, it, we've been all talking about this payment and lose so i think it's pretty genuine for us to say we'd like to do something with that money to put it somewhere and we think that you know, combining the zba to say you don't need to comply with the affordable requirements and having this board say yes we'll modify your existing special permit so that it reflects this ZBA decision and the money will go to you know be held in escrow until after town meeting if it passes it'll yeah. fund it and if not 
another we, we, yeah, we definitely want to get the money out because Barry, on a business basis, knowing that there was an inclusionary component, proceeded with this project. So he's prepared to carry out his obligations, except that it is what, what he would to would, do it. Would he be willing to take out another project in town in lieu of building these, i.e., the North Hadley Hall? This is where I think you have to retain the rational nexus between yeah. the, the funds and what it's coming that, for. That, that, is, that may be a good selling point for town meeting, but I don't think it's a quid pro quo we can, uh, we can make. Well, we'll contribute the funds, and then he'll agree to do it for those funds <laughs> on, the, on the back end. Yeah. Oh, man. Mm. Possibly. Aren't you doing something similar over in... Uh, Hatfield? Hatfield is yeah. yeah. So, so variance to suspend 27.5.8. Okay. And then Money. amend yep. the special permit to accept payment in lieu based on the action of the ZBA. Exactly. Okay. That's a good summary. Yeah. I don't agree with that at all. Until I know all the facts. About Molly, are you waiting? Are you going to wait in on this, or are you waiting for some other thing? No, I mean I wasn't planning on weighing in. I, mean, I, I just want to understand what the the issues were around it. Mm. And I mean, I'm certainly in favor of trying to expeditiously move the project forward. To be honest with you, there are people in town who are interested in the property, and I questioned, you know, with some degree of frequency about what's going on with the over 55. We thought, you know. Uh, what's this we're hearing about, you know, the pricing, uh, you know, so I just wanted a better handle on, on what was happening and I'm glad to hear how you're trying to resolve it. So we're, what, what, one of the great comments I hear, well, geez, I'd like to get something, uh, you know, downsized and uh, Barry had a focus group mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know if you heard about it, but, you know, what do you want to pay? Well, 225 yeah. 250 so, maybe, and, well, this is well, what you're going to get. Okay. Just for just for point of information, is November seventh an election year this year? No. 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 Not in Massachusetts. Yeah. Okay. This is a five Tuesday month. We can't hold a public hearing on seventeenth because it's too soon. However, if you want to do this jo so-called joint public hearing with the ZBA and us. We could hold a public hearing on November 7th if you filed on, November, on, on uh, October 17th because it, gives, because it gives the five Tuesday month we have the time we have the time to publish the notices based on that. Do we even need to reopen the public hearing? Well, I think we should. <laughs> you've issued the permit, right? You've issued a yes. decision. Yeah. It's yeah. filed with the clerk, it's recorded at the registry, Yeah, it's done. Yeah. So what you're now doing is coming in to have your permit modified. Yeah, it would only be a new public hearing. If this yeah. rises to the level of being a material change, yeah. I think we could probably argue about that, but the conservative approach is probably just to just publish it, re-notice it. It will come with the message because the hearing is closed. Yes, but I mean, we may argue that it's yeah. a we, minimum We've change. amended some stuff, even though it's yeah. been done, there have been minor amendments. We're in a gray area here. I think the safest way is I just think do this the needs a public hearing. Just do the public hearing. The biggest thing is, can the ZBA yeah, meet on point. the seventh? We will track them down. Good okay, because you that gives you a month. Yep. And if you can do that, we can certainly do yours on the seventh. Like I said, we have enough time this month because of the the five Tuesday month to do the public no, public notices and go forward with that. In fact, if you can find the ZBA out ahead of time, get me the mailing labels and I'll just schedule it accordingly. Okay. Okay. So what I will do, John, is uh, I'll send because then you could be here. I'll send uh, <laughs> Joel Bart an email <laughs> asking. If Copeland and Page has experience with uh, inclusionary zoning and affordable housing, and that we want to talk to him when he's out here on Thursday. 
to bone up. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, that all sounds easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what was solved with it? Nothing. Oh, real easy. Well, sounds like a plan. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Really good. Yeah, we're trying to... We'll get this back. Oh, okay. got it. We've got, we've got the information, so we'll okay. probably see you there. It's just... And my question, the uh, location of that, isn't the pole room where they're making it to the John Musani Health Museum, um, Health Center? Isn't that all that ripped apart? I don't know. Uh, it said Butternut Farm. I, I, no, 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 no
Right. Yeah, well, I mean, well, you can. Can you, you can, regulate it? So well, you can, only, you can prohibit. Panels? You can prohibit if you want. To. If you, you can regulate. You can reasonably regulate them. Reasonably regulate them. Reasonably and that includes prohibiting them in certain what zones. What is reasonable? Requiring special permits in certain. Zones. Everybody keeps saying reasonable. Yeah. What is reasonable? It's what it's, it's different. It's, it's reasonable Very subjective. Is different. Very subjective. It's so different from if, well, well, but, but but in terms of solar bylaws, and this is different from reasonable regulation of agricultural uses. Uh, which is almost you can't touch them. Uh, solar bylaws, uh, which has similar wording, there are towns and bylaws that have been approved that permit them only in certain districts and by special permit. So we allow so, large scale in yeah. the agricultural residential district or in the industrial district. Yeah. <clears throat> so one solution to your problem is to limit it to the industrial district. Uh, At which point, you know, they but then have the size of the parcels, yep. which but, you're probably going to find in your agricultural and outlying. Areas. But, yeah. but we, there are two things with that. If yeah. we limit it to the industrial, we get into the situation that Joe was complaining about where someone was proposing a solar field in yeah. the industrial park. We're taking an industrial <coughs> zone yeah. land yeah. away. Your tax exactly. money land. That's right. Yeah. The yeah. other part yeah. is that if we take it out of the agricultural zone, we are affecting every property owner in the, in the agricultural residential district who could benefit from leasing to a solar field. Right. So, you, you, know, you, you have to look at it parcel by parcel and just recognize if you have a good reason, you know, because you're doing it by special permit, um, if you have a good reason, you don't have to grant a special permit. But the good reason has to be more than I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. But it can, it could be you can't adequately screen it there. That's a good reason. That's, that's, that's what I was yeah. getting. So yeah. simply yeah. not liking yeah. solar, right. simply not liking solar no. is is, is, is is too subjective to you. You got to have yeah. real right. reasons. Because what what you're saying by allowing this by special permit is you're saying that on some parcels they're okay. And on some parcels, they're not okay. And we want to have that discretion to determine which are okay and which aren't. You know, as far as solar, like the roof mounts, the barn mounts, that don't yeah. bother me at all. It's the thing, like what they did over Atkins, I don't want to see them do that. You know, that's a little all around our town. That is a little raw. Right? They, 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 the, they, the they one, that is raw, but it's, it's they, not just they, there. It's all over. I, 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 I wanted you to see that there. They want you, they, there's civic pride in that field. Exactly right. right. Yes. What? There's civic pride in that field. Yes. Make, it's, it's, it's a state What kind of area. pride? They, they, they're, they're, green, they're green and yeah. they're, they're trying to be green. I like solar. Yeah. Doesn't bother me a bit. However, being that close to the road, I go to agree with John. It's like, I mean, and again, everybody's opinion is different. Right. And that's one that's kind of like in your face. The solar fields that we have around town that are set way off from the road, I mean, you're talking hundreds and hundreds of feet. Okay, you see them, but it doesn't really, eh, so what? Right. But that one is a little bit, and again, it's a little bit too much in yeah. your face. So I drive around yeah. the state and I see those, it's waves of oh, yeah. them. You know, but but I, I, I always say, I, they're, there are really only two issues with solar farms, and one is stormwater management, that can be pretty easily addressed, and the other is aesthetics. Yeah. And it's the out of sight, out of mind. Right. Well, eventually, uh, the some, some of the solar fields, fields like, of them. We're, yeah. we're limiting them to a reasonable size, but some of these solar fields, like you see, that are 20 and 30 acres, that's a, that's, that's a little much. I think it's a 75 acre one in Well, what's to stop it the way if somebody wants it's to huge. Get, town is five acres in Hadley. Yeah. But five yeah. acres? Yes. Your you compromise is a good kilowatt? one. Can you do a large scale on five acres? Yes. Well, okay. you can do a large scale on one acre. Anything oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, on a large scale from the state perspective, it's 250 kilowatts. Oh, yeah. A, a me, uh, one acre, I believe, is just about one megawatt. Okay. I think it's right, 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 right <clears> under <throat> or just over one okay. megawatt, roughly. Because for the we did a 2.3 megawatt in playing field. I think it was like 12 acres. Well, again, is it solid or is it dispersed? Uh, dispersed like you know, is it like pieces all over? It may take a uh, I, I, maybe uh, a 12 acre yeah, parcel, I mean, but I, 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 I doubt it's 12 acres of panels. Yeah, I'm thinking the old panel surface, and it was I'm sure it was more than an acre though. 
but it would be this to do yeah I, I believe it's about yeah. an acre of, it's I think it's I think one acre is not a megawatt an acre is about three quarters of a megawatt okay. something like that, that would make sense but about that but, it, but that's still yeah. a lot that's still 150 yeah. kW well there's someone like now nowadays a 250 kW is not even large scale anymore because you know they're all building megawatts, you know, two three megawatts. But, but, but the state defines anything as over ten kW as a commercial system. Yeah, and for the green communities, anything over two fifty is large scale. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Okay. So what we're trying to do is you know give you some sense that you can. You know, you're just not victims to this and are powerless because you can do something, but just be judicious. Yeah, and I, I think we need to look at what, he's, what Larry suggested in yellow and take it to heart and say, you know, is that what we want to put in there? Because it does make it a bit more concrete yeah. as far as what it means to screen. Yeah. So. And one of the things I found when I put it in there for the uh, decommissioning bond is, uh, and you may have in yours, I didn't really see it quite explicit, that the dollar value is based upon prevailing wages. You don't deduct the recycling value from it, uh, and you do an inflation factor for 25 years from now. Uh, because if the town is going to have to take that bond and decommission the site, it's going to cost you a lot more to do it than the private applicant to do it. Um, and I've always said, the town really doesn't want to have to decommission that site. So that bond should be like a poison pill, uh, that if you're going to make us use that bond... Too big to walk away. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. Uh, because you don't want to get involved in that. Yeah, Going in there and taking it down and recycling it. And, I mean, it's just... Uh, it's not something we're good at. In your, your visual impact mitigation, you don't have to maintain that screen for the entire life of the solar array, right? Um, you didn't put that in there. I would have to look, but we can always, we can always add that. That should be in there. I mean, everything should be maintained for the life of the But the if silver. it's not spelled in, no, no, it the, be Yeah, I know it's true, but the fencing, any kind of screening needs to be. So take a look at that. Will be the term of the of the solar array. That's a good one. You're right. System conditions, owners of solar array, solar systems mm -hmm. shall be responsible for maintaining them in good condition. Yeah. And they can just put another sub sentence or a, a comma, yeah. including uh, you know, yeah. roads, screening, fencing, whatever it should be, right there. So including perfect. all aspects yes. for the life of the facility. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a perfect spot for it. Yeah, that would be. 28.4.3. Yeah. Right 
district. 28.6.8, no more than 50% of the land use to require clearing of forest. Yes. What is forest? Is it? There's actually a state there a land use classification for that. Really? Yeah. And, so it's, and it's, you know, so some people say, well, why don't you apply the same standard to farmland? And my thought is always, well, because it's, it's easily uh, restorable to restore it, the facility like this to farmland. But you can't restore the forest when the life of the project is over. Um, How do you restore the forest? So, and even the state is trying to discourage you from using forest land for this. I think they don't give you oh, as high up. Pardon? You need to clear cut them and stuff? Yeah. yeah. They did that, what the hell was that, in Oregon yeah. somewhere, didn't they? Yeah, All I mean, they don't prohibit clear. it, but they just don't let you... Clear cut the whole thing. They don't let you charge as much for what you're generating. Uh, you get like a little minus uh, to it. <clears throat> minus factor into it. Yeah, that look like about a 30-acre project over there. Yeah, that was a big one, if I remember. I, I, was, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen it, but I remember reading about it. Yeah. There's a big one To go there. to Route 2, jump on Route 2 to Boston. Yeah. Right there in orange. Yeah. That thing you take clear cut that. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, it's right at the uh, uh, the junction there. Right. What, what two and two way? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. They cut. I haven't been there. Too and then across the street they. I went. think it's like what is it, the southeast corner. Well, yeah, that was a used to be all. I, I haven't been to the other end in a while. Yeah. It's all been clear cut. Yeah, it's all a, the wood. All the wood on the it's state. A, it's a really big area. They right. On oh. They clear cut the whole thing. Yeah. I was watching that. Wow. I said, boy, I hope you guys don't come to happy. That's when we could stop easily. Nasty. <laughs> yeah. And that's... Anyways, okay. Um, so, next, thank you very much. So we'll see you in a month. See you in a month. We'll see you in a month. You're going to be, you, be at the 18th? I'll, be, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Up there, but right. I, I, we, I'm, I'm going to that. Are you going to let... Us know where the heck this place is. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's where it is. I can't okay. imagine. Well, you guys are setting this up. Can you find out and let us know? Email. I will let you know if it's not there. Okay. Because I don't I even know where it is. Set. It's full. Right full center. Center. If you look it's at the, center right behind the post, old post office. Yeah. 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 What would walk? That's that's the center of Amherst. Yeah. yeah. The, the farm. Google that, John. But the farm is um, almost like a Hampshire College, if yeah. I'm right. I don't know where that is. Where's the, where's the location say? It's well, one, one mill, mill right? Right. So oh, that's uh, that's just before Hampshire College. Okay. Well, one mill drive. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Right, that's yes. right, right near Hampshire. Yeah. Off yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. yeah. Bank Center, right? And the bank, bank center is the. Uh, uh, it's like right in the middle of the parking lot. Yeah. yeah. Lousy yeah. parking. Yeah. Lousy <laughs> parking. Okay. They know how to pick a senior center site. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. okay, very good. Thank you. See Thank you. you. Right. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Good yes. Night. Get in the month. I have nothing else. Very good. I have nothing else. I have nothing else. Do you have anything? In, anybody else have anything? No. Did mm -hmm. anybody do anything on that budget? Nothing. We haven't heard from them. Uh, they resolved in a different way and did not uh, touch our budget at all. Looks like much to cut. Right. Yeah. Like I said, <laughs> how do you cut nothing? Yeah. Anyway. Okay. okay. You can make copies of this one. Anyway. Anything? Move, we adjourn. Motion? Second? Move. Second? Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, John.